greetings to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I continue to wear this mask around the very few places that I go. However, I'm not going to wear it through this, but it doesn't mean that I don't care about you, or your loved ones, or anybody else around. I really want to be concerned and do the right things because this virus is so, so bad. But here we are. It's a day that we rejoice in God's presence in our life. And it is the Sunday that we would call the Good Shepherd Sunday. The Good Shepherd is the one who comes to us. He loves us continually. And as we'll hear in the gospel, Jesus is called the gate, the gate of the sheepfold. So we say of our Lord Jesus, Alleluia, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. Let us pray. O oh God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joys of the feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Something that many of us know as the Shepherd's Psalm, or a Psalm of David, uh, is appointed for us, and it's the uh, 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We do have a gospel for this uh, Sunday, and it's a, it's a beautiful word that we have on this fourth Sunday of, of Easter. 
It's the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all out, all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Who enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Taking a, a hint from our psalm, I do believe, and sense many times in the day, that I'm living in the valley of the shadow, and I do want to add, truthfully, the shadow of death. I think about the numbers that I see recorded. I think about what that means in a personal way, because if I just listen to numbers and I see numbers, all of that passes by so fast that I can't capture the depth of meaning and the sorrow of one person's death. Although I do know what that's about. I've been through situations with death and comforting others many, many, many times. And yet in this circumstance, it seems so distant that I wonder if I can bring myself with Jesus' help into this place, his fold, where I can be safe enough to express fears and anxieties, the fear of death, the fear that those around me are not going to be here anymore. It could happen suddenly. I don't know. We don't know, and that's a part of our fear in this time and place. Fear in this time and place is important to notice and say, I believe that the Good Shepherd is leading me and is leading you through this particular time of distress and sorrow and anguish, tragedy. So much is swirling around. It's a time like none other. However, we in the church do believe that there is someone called Jesus who is shepherding our lives, who does not want his little flock to be lost. There's a hymn that goes by, Have no fear, little flock. Have no fear, for the Lord is with you. Taking that into my life, if the Lord is with me, is vitally important for my faith and my love and my compassion for everyone around me and everyone that I know. I am missing all of you. I think it keeps getting worse. I notice people that I truly love and care about, whom I would see here in the sanctuary, and on Sunday morning I'd want to make my rounds to make sure I say hello to as many people as I could. Well, I can't get everybody, but then when we're in the time of sharing the peace, I get a lot more people. And I say, hello, how are you doing? What's happening? We have this small exchange. And in that time, I believe that the Good Shepherd is with us and guiding us. 
I want to show you something. It's an image. It's an image of the Good Shepherd. It's uh, something that was given to me by a pastor who was a mentor for me uh, when I was uh, going to seminary, and this was a gift at ordination, the Good Shepherd. Oh, this is an image from the uh, second century, but it's something that is so refreshing to me as I see the Good Shepherd. I believe that it's the Good Shepherd Jesus, and in his arms, in his arms, he's actually carrying, oh, that's a little sheep in there. But he is there with a Eucharistic bread, and he's taking us into his deep, deep heart of love because he's the one who gave himself for us. Gave himself still gives himself to us. The good shepherd carrying the little sheep, carrying in the bosom, and saying, this is a part of my life for you. I love this, so I keep it in places over the years where I can see it often. The good shepherd. I want to speak about two more aspects of this gospel that we have. In this gospel, we're not hearing the typical ways that we listen to the scripture, I am the good shepherd. But this part of the shepherd's story is important. He says, Jesus says, according to John, I am the gate for the sheep. Now, it's always been a little... Uh, from a mind perplexing to me, I don't know what a, a enfolded area is, a fenced in area. But 2,000 years ago, there was no electric fencing, and there was nothing that really maybe would mark a territory except stones that had been laid over and over again to create a kind of a sheepfold where sheep would be able to come in and find rest. And Jesus says, I'm right there to let the sheep in and also I'm there to let the sheep out and I lay there in that place to keep them safe and then they go and follow me following the good shepherd I believe the good shepherd wants us to connect with him as often and as deeply as we can ways to do that second point be in prayer we have a lot of time for prayer. There's an invitation, I think, for us to be in prayer together for one another, for circumstances, and everything around us that we can think of to pray and speak words to the Good Shepherd. That's the calling I sense I have in these days. Things will change. We will come back to church. We don't know when and we don't know how that will be. But I believe that it will happen. But everything has changed. And Jesus is with us in this change, with you, with me, with our church, with the people of God everywhere. And as a matter of fact, he's with people in the church and out of the church. God just loves all of us. That's the heart of a good shepherd. Let us pray together. Almighty God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, with the power of the Holy Spirit, we come to you knowing that we need healing and help in this time. Help us to believe in the hope of the resurrection to new life. Help us to join with the people of God everywhere and at all times and places and know that there is a great communion of saints living and dead. Remember that we have a shepherding God, and we want to thank you, O oh God, for everyone who's involved in teaching these days, children being taught at their homes by their parents. Oh my, 
so good and yet difficult. So we pray for parents. We pray for our schools that are in our homes. And we pray for TLC because we do intend to come back to TLC, perhaps in another way, but our school will return. Thank you, creating God. We praise you and thank you because you give the harvest. Plants are being planted. We wait for the growth to appear. And in agriculture these days, there are many stresses. And so we ask your hand to be with all the farmers as we try to feed the world. Lord Jesus, you are our guide and protector, and no one should be in want. Lord Jesus, as you carry us tenderly, we thank you for all those who work in the medical field, those who are trying to help those who have the Corona-19 virus. Oh, it's especially a tough time. We see the pictures of those who are going in and out, trying to be helping hands and healing hands for the people around them. And so we pray especially for all the victims and all those who are helping in these days. And we place our loved ones in your care. Oh, it would be wonderful if we could name them one by one but you know their names and circumstances. And we thank you for their lives as faithful witnesses. Remember, we ask, all who have died through this pandemic, help us to remember that this is a special and unique time. And so with bold confidence in your kingdom, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray, trusting in your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And join with me in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so this brings me to the conclusion of this time. Here is a special blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. And so we remember Christ's risen just as he said, and we go in peace to share that good news with one another. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen.